I I don't know. Please, I don't know. A man walks down a tight corridor. He's in a webway, a hallway with interactive digital walls. Webways act as museums in today's society. This webway has not been visited for months. The world outside is eerily quiet. The sound of footsteps is muffled as the man pauses to look in the main screen. This is the year 2193. Countless changes have been made to the human species, the most prominent being the one to human emotion. The man reaches out and taps start. The only glowing button on the screen. The screen lights up. The video begins. We created this gallery to trace our roots back to our earliest ancestors, because we have always been plagued by fear. Even in the beginning, we mastered fire and light and warmth. All because of our fear of darkness, our ancestors found a voice that acted as a vessel to carry their ideas and knowledge, because they were only motivated by the fear of forgetting all that they learned. We settled down in one area because we were afraid of not being able to find any more food, and growing crops seemed more safe, anyways. And in spite of having more food than ever. And not ever having to feel loneliness again because of rapidly growing villages, there was always the constant fear of losing everything that was built. This, this gallery, is meant to remind ourselves of what we once were, creatures ruled by fear, and of what we must never become. The truth is, those who came before us have always feared. There is no limit to fear. Until us, fear was incessant and infallible. From fear grows insecurity. From insecurity stems greed. Why do we always desire more power and more land and more belongings? It is because we fear losing power, losing land, and losing our belongings. Greed creates war, and war only breeds strife. Look, this is all the result of fear, and the fear of difference and change. Nothing good comes out of fear. Fear only reduces humanity into mere animals who fight to protect their own from imaginary monsters. While the truth is, we were the only monsters. We were the only monsters controlled by fear, and we were ignorant. We were possessive. We were desperate, and we were trapped. This Buddhist monk wishes to reach Nirvana, but he cannot let go of his love for the Buddha. He cannot let go of the alarming thought of losing his individuality forever. And if he cannot let go of those thoughts, he will never achieve relief from suffering. The same applied to our ancestors. They reached a point where they could no longer progress further, with fear constantly looming above them. It is impossible to go above the level of animals if fear still exists. This, this is the start of our society as we know it today. This baby will never have to feel fear again, and the only thing we will have to fear is instinctual fear. For example, the fear during suffocation. And now we are without fear. We no longer possess the disability our ancestors did. We are free. You have reached the end of this webway. Restarting page in five minutes. The man looks at the flickering timer nostalgically. There is a wrinkled piece of paper in his aged hands. The heading reads: "Mandatory procedure: amygdala modification." Please visit your local hospital to set up an appointment now. This is for the good of our society. A date is stamped below the heading: January fifteenth, twenty ninety-four. The man marvels at the cold, white walls of the hospital photo flashing on the screen in front of him. 
The baby smiles back at him. The same baby gazes at him, innocently, from the paper he clutches in his hands. The world changed so rapidly. Humanity beat fear, and the man briefly wonders what would happen if he refused to get the surgery like he was tempted to. The man closes his eyes and presses his wrist to his forehead. A small headache pulses along his skull. So, what is fear? Well, to him, fear is a noun. He can barely remember fear. Fear is only an object. Fear is not an emotion. And fear, right now, for some reason, feels like tinges of sadness and desperation mixed in with the memory. Of watching rain fall on bloody sidewalks, the man looks at the screen one last time. He wonders how many people still remember fear. And then he turns to exit the building. And as he exits the building, he lights the building on fire, as he was told to do so. No one will ever remember fear now, without this gallery. And that's the way he wants it to be as well. Fear is a burden to him as well. And as the building finally burns down, the last echoes of a revolution finally die down.